meeting in Washington. Members of the National Organization for Women say the Promise Keeper's message is dangerous for women. You heard a little of that, uh, that sentiment being uh, echoed in Melissa's report. But joining us live now from our Albany News Center, Regional Now President Lois Shapiro Cantor. And Lois, thanks for being with us. Let's put aside for a second what appeared to be somewhat incendiary rhetoric and say, the, the promise keepers say they want to be, uh, uh, rededicate themselves to their wives, to their family, to their God. What's wrong with that? Well, hi, Liz. Thank you for inviting me to be on your show this evening. Well, first of all, we have to recognize that the promise keepers uh, is a political and Christian supremacy male-dominated movement which has been spreading across this country. Within just a very short period of time, they've amassed 1.1 million men in over uh, 20, 22 uh, settings across this country, calling in 50,000 men at a particular setting. Yeah. The reason the National Organization for Women are concerned about this particular uh, Christian supremacy movement is the fact that it calls upon women to be subservient in the relationship. Okay, let's get back to the question. They say they merely want to rededicate themselves to their to their wives and to their God and then to each other. And that as a result, there will be um, fewer crimes, uh, less abortion, less greed, and on and on. Does that not have the potential to be a good thing for this country? Well, Liz, let's look at really what the leaders uh, have been saying. The leaders, which is really a political who-who of the Christian uh, right and uh, the Christian uh, coalition, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, etc., and also James Dobson, who represents Focus on the Family, mm -hmm. certainly they've not been non-political, and of course they've chosen a very political setting here in Washington, D.C., to espouse these views. What they are actually saying in their literature and in their prayer meetings and in their rallies, which women are not invited to, if you look at the Times Magazine article this month, you do not see any women in the uh, rallies there. They are saying to women that you are to allow us to lead and you must be subservient. Mm -hmm. In fact, what they're saying, Liz, is that uh, because of the fact that I, perhaps I have not honored my responsibilities with you, perhaps I have not uh, brought in a paycheck, perhaps I've even physically abused them, please forgive me now. And then, in fact, what they're really saying, Liz, yeah. in order for me to honor my responsibilities, uh, I'm going to have to be able to win and play by my rules, hmm. and therefore I'm going to be able to dominate you. Uh, well, uh, will you be among those protesting in Washington? I won't be there, yeah. but I'll be there in spirit, Liz. Uh, and I'm sure there will be many others who will be there in, in person. And uh, Lois, thank you very much for joining us tonight and sharing your perspective on the Promise Keepers with us. Thank you, Liz. Well, forget those computer skills. If you want a good job that's also rewarding, then you need to focus on people skills. Jack's on your side with more when we come back. Albany, this is News Channel 13, live at 6. Expected to head south this weekend. Some of them will leave from right here at the Rensselaer train station where they have chartered a train that will leave early Saturday morning as they head to the nation's capital and join what could be more than half a million people. They meet in stadiums across the country. Now Promise Keepers is calling Christian men to a prayer rally on the National Mall this Saturday. Bill Adams, an assistant pastor at Latham's Light of the World Christian Church, has been before and will go again. My desire to be there would be prompted by the, the theme of repentance of the church really saying before God that uh, we're not what we should be and we want to get it right with you. Adam says Promise Keepers focuses on men's roles based on the Bible and asks them to devote themselves to their families. He says the rallies are also a great way to be reunited with friends. But not everyone agrees with what Promise Keepers is. Lois Shapiro, Cantor of the National Organization for Women, says the group is political, far right wing. That they have a clear political past of being uh, opposed to women's reproductive rights, of being against the women's movement, and in particular in being against uh, sexual orientation freedom in this country for lesbians and gays. But Adam says he hasn't seen anything political at the rallies he's attended. That doesn't apply at all. It's just there's no anti-anything uh, to the gospel or to you know, what promise keepers is. Adams does say that God's order is that men are the leaders in their home. National organizations for women, however, say they see this group as asking women to be subservient. Chris, as you know, a lot of people interpret the Bible in different ways, and therein lies the controversy. Thanks very much, Carmen. Ed? The state's campsite reservations are... Uh, restore my... 
broadcasting career. Broadcaster Marv Albert is looking ahead today after apologizing to the woman he bit during a sexual encounter and learning he will not go to jail. Good evening. Today, Marv Albert was sentenced for his attack, which occurred in a Virginia hotel room. And the Arlington judge handed down a 12-month suspended prison sentence, which means that Albert will not go to jail. He also told Albert that the assault conviction against him would be dropped if he were to maintain a clean record. Albert was also ordered to continue mental health counseling, and Keith Oppenheim has more. Marv Albert entered an Arlington, Virginia courtroom this morning with his fiance and family. Hi, how are you? Hi. How are you doing, Albert? Albert had earlier made a plea bargain with prosecutors, admitting only to a misdemeanor. So Judge Benjamin Kendrick gave Albert the expected, a 12-month suspended sentence, and he insisted Albert continue psychological counseling and break no laws. If Albert succeeds, the conviction might be overturned. Later, in a brief statement, Albert said he'll try to repair his life and broadcasting career. I would particularly uh, like to say uh, a very special thanks to the, uh, the fans of uh, the New York City area who have uh, just been incredible to me uh, throughout all this. Thank you very much. Albert's accuser, 42-year-old Vanessa Perhatch, may have been satisfied. She got the apology she'd been asking for. It was a 10-year relationship. Uh, this was not uh, some stranger that jumped out of the bushes and did this to her. It was a very close personal friend, and the personal apology uh, is what um, uh, was most significant to her. But the woman who turned the case around was certainly not satisfied. Patricia Mastin, who stunned the court with testimony of her own encounter with Albert, believes Albert should do time in jail. What kind of a message are we sending out to the children today? Is it do whatever you want, to whomever you want, at any time you want, and you walk away free? It's not clear whether Mastin or Perhatch will file civil suits. What is clear is the lives of everyone involved in this case have been changed forever. Keith Oppenheim reporting. Some local advocates for women say the only change that we can expect from this case is positive change. Melissa Merritt's been talking with several local people for their reaction to the Marv Albert ruling today, and Melissa's here now with their perspective on it. It was interesting. We heard a lot of different opinions today, and some that might surprise you. I think it kind of sends the wrong message. How so? Uh, battering of, of anybody, women, men, children. I think you should do some jail time for sure. You might expect the National Organization of Women to come out the same way towards the no jail time ruling for Marv Albert, but not so. We have to be sensitive to the fact that celebrities like are at to risk to being uh, targeted by certain individuals for whether it be money or for some other types of issues. And so we always keep that in mind. And certainly we like to focus on the cases where it is clearly uh, uh, possible to see that there are legitimate claims made by women. And the evidence is not clear, according to President Lois Shapiro Cantor. She says since the case never went to trial, the evidence will never be heard, so now won't take sides. Although, if there was any wrongdoing, she's glad Albert will be required to seek counseling. On a first, um, on a first conviction and a misdemeanor, no jail time is not unusual. Assistant District Attorney Veronica Dumas, who works in Albany County's sex crime unit, says the system worked and the ruling should actually encourage other domestic violence victims to come forward. I think you can be real, real, real quick to jump on the bandwagon and say, oh, this is just terrible, this, this whole thing was terrible, but the system worked for her. I mean, she did have her day in court. So I, I think victims can be encouraged by that that no matter what the celebrity status is. But some people on the street believe that celebrity status is what got Albert essentially off the hook. But if you should try to revive his broadcasting career, would you watch? Certainly I would, sure. Providing uh, he makes restitution for uh, his behavior. And of course, some people we talked to say they'd never watch him again if he got back into broadcasting. So it was very interesting. Wide range of opinions Certainly. today. Yeah. And the now, the now opinion kind of you was know, a sh shock, a bit, yeah, yeah, a little bit. I, a lot of people that we talked to, once they heard that what their opinion was, was also shocked by that, mm -hmm. not taking a stand. Interesting. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks. Some local reaction to the judge's decision. Brian? Good evening, Chris. Marv Albert couldn't keep his job or even his dignity following some of the testimony that came out during that sexual assault trial that was held in Virginia. But he was able to keep his freedom today after publicly apologizing in court to Vanessa Perhatch. 
That's the woman he severely bit during a sexual romp in a hotel room last February. Marv Albert could have gotten up to a year in jail and a $2,500 fine when he went before a Virginia state judge today. But instead, Albert was allowed to go free after saying he was sorry for hurting the woman with whom he had had rough sex over a period of 10 years. I, I'm just looking to uh, put the pieces of my life uh, back together and eventually uh, restore my broadcasting career. Reaction to Albert's sentencing was mixed among those we spoke to this evening. I think a fine in some community service, yeah. I think that would have been a, an appropriate course of action. Just a classic example of uh, what money and, uh, you know, a, a position of prestige in society can uh, do for a person, you know. Um, I think he got off a little bit light, but uh, if he does what he needs to do, uh, I think that the outcome will be positive, you know. I don't think it's fair. If you're going to play the game, you're going to pay. I think he got off easy. Now, if you're going to be in the limelight, you got to be somewhat of a role model. you got to play it straight. Perhaps most surprising was the reaction of the New York chapter of the National Association for Women. It says it's not about to second-guess the judge in the case. This was a long-term relationship. There may have been some bizarre uh, sexual behavior involved, but it was consensual. So, you know, the National Organization for Women would look at the facts of the case and try to come to determination as to whether or not the complainant really had a criminal case in this matter. Perhaps the judge also looked at it that way. We really don't know. Now, though some people feel Albert perhaps should have gone to jail, legal experts say the outcome of the case today is not out of the ordinary. In fact, they say had Albert gone to jail, that would have been unusual, given the fact he was a first-time offender and had no prior record. Chris? Oh, but it may not be the end of his time in court. There were some suspicions today that a further lawsuit could be filed. That's true, Chris. Uh, in fact, although they weren't really ready to talk about it, there is some discussion that perhaps the uh, woman that was involved in this and brought the original complaint could sue him for personal injuries. Uh, that remains to be seen, but uh, he's clearly still not out of the woods yet on this. Brian, thanks very much. Some of Father Brendan O'Keefe's former parishioners think their protests